the 1860s, gentlemen's scarves were an essential part of men's fashion. Scarves were primarily made from wool, silk, or cotton textiles, with wool being the most popular choice due to its warmth and durability. Knitting was commonly used to create scarves, producing a soft and cozy texture. The scarves were typically long and narrow, measuring up to six feet in length, and were often knotted in a simple loop around the neck. Crochet scarves were also popular during this time, although they were less common than knitted scarves. Crocheted scarves were often made with a lacy or open work design, creating a more delicate and decorative effect. Both knitting and crochet scarves were often embellished with tassels or fringe at the ends, adding a touch of elegance to the garment. The scarves were available in a variety of colors and patterns, ranging from plain and simple to brightly colored stripes and plaids. Overall, gentlemen's scarves in the 1860s were a practical and fashionable accessory designed to keep the neck warm and add a touch of style to men's wardrobes. Hello there and welcome to Just Vintage Crochet. So in this tutorial we will be making this crochet scarf for a gentleman. This does come from Godey's July through to December 1862 edition. And I did already make this scarf, which is why I'm able to tell you exactly how much yarn I used, exactly how I was able to make the pattern work for me, and also that I know I can do this with just a regular, or that you can do this with just a regular Tunisian hook. You know, a, a circular Tunisian, Tunisian hook is not needed. This is a Tunisian crochet scarf. So I am not um, the most experienced with Tunisian crochet. This scarf was literally the fourth thing I ever made with Tunisian crochet. And the other three things I made prior to this were all made with just simple Tunisian stitch. So I wanted to work on the scarf a bit before I jumped on here. I, this was one I didn't want to just jump into blindly because it's using a technique I'm not super versed in. Uh, but it worked out great. And so I'm very, very familiar with the stitch now, so we can just jump right on in without any confusion about the pattern or trying to figure it out. We're just gonna jump right on in. So this is a five millimeter Tunisian hook. And also we're going to use a five millimeter crochet hook. For the entire pattern, I used um, four of these and I'm going to leave links down below in the description box where you can find both of these on Amazon. So I used four of these. This doesn't have a color. It just has a number, 396. And this also doesn't have a, a name. It just has a number of 369. Oh, I am just now realizing that. 396 and 369. Now I realize this looks kind of mustardy on camera. In real life, it's a deer fawn brown. It's very, very pretty. Um, and this is kind of a burgundy. Kind of a burgundy. It's not quite as deep as burgundy, but it's pretty close. So I used four of these and only one of these, including the fringe, just one of these covered the whole thing. Now for reference, this has 383 yards. These come with I, it doesn't even say the yardage on there. You'd have to look it up, I think. Uh, right there. Okay, it comes with 62.5 meters. These are 25 gram balls, but like I said, I used four of these. All right, let's just jump right in to the pattern. Now, starting off, I'm just going to show you a little sample size. And we'll work up that little sample size at first. That's just to get you started. I really was not confident when I first started playing around with these stitches. So after we reach a certain point in the sample size, whenever I've caught up with the actual scarf, then we will transition over to the scarf because I filmed quite a bit of that. Okay, so go ahead and grab your Tunisian hook and the dark color first. Now, as far as yarn weights, this is about a three weight. Okay, like a fingering weight but we'll find out toward the end of the video that this this weight is actually thicker 
than what they are calling for here. They call for a number five hook, and it just says that it's worked in two colors. That's all it says. It doesn't say what kind of yarn to use at all, just that it's a number five hook. Now, I didn't pick a five millimeter hook because it said number five hook. I picked a five millimeter hook because, well, I only own three Tunisian hooks. <laughs> And the five is the smallest one I have as these are eight and 10 millimeter. So that's why I went with a five because it's the smallest Tunisian hook that I own. This wound up working out very, very well. So let's just go ahead and get started. Okay, so like I said at the start, I'm just going to work up a sample just to get you started right here at the beginning. And then we will catch up to where I'm at on the scarf. So the pattern wants you to chain 236. And of course, I'm gonna go ahead and just start with my regular crochet hook, just for this sample. I'm also only gonna start with a chain of 10. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And they say to start your first row as just a simple Tunisian stitch row. So in the second back bump from the hook, Go ahead and go into that back bump and pull up a loop and hold it there. Now the next back bump over, go in, pull up a loop and hold it there and do this for the root, for the rest of your back bumps. Just gather all of your back bumps. Now the, the loop on the hook that we first started off with before we skipped over to the second back bump, that actually counts as your first stitch. So by the end, we will still have 10 loops on our hook. So that is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and into the very last back bump makes 10. Now with Tunisian crochet, your very first stitch on your return pass, we never turn, we just work like a typewriter like this, okay? So your very first stitch of your return pass is called a chain one. That is simply yarn over and pull through one loop only. That is your chain one. Now you will yarn over and pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, all the way to the end, just like this. Now the pattern calls this stitch that we are about to do the wave stitch. With the wave stitch, we will be starting between our very first bar right here and our very second bar right into that space right there. So you will go into that space. Just let me get my deal here. We're going to utilize the whole of the space. We're not going to be going in between any bars like that and we're not going to be working into the front bar either. We're just going to work into this hollowed out hole right here. So you will go into that space and pull up a loop. Now go into the next space over, identical space over, and pull up a loop. Now yarn over and pull through only two loops. You should have three on your hook. Pull through those two loops. Now into the same hollowed out space that we just worked into, go back into it and pull up a loop. And into the next space over between all the bars, pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through. Now you have four loops on your hook. You're gonna yarn over and pull through just the first two. We will always pull through just the first two. And we're going to repeat that into the same space we just worked into Go into that space and pull up a loop. Next space over, right there. Go into that space and pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through the first two loops on the hook. Now we have three of the wave stitches made. Now we just keep repeating. Go into the same space we just worked into, pull up a loop. Next space over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Pull through two, Karina. <laughs> Same space, pull up a loop. Next space over, pull up a loop. 
yarn over and pull through two. Same space, next space over, yarn over, pull up a loop. Now I'll be quiet. You can just observe. There we go. Now our last space. So here we have the space we just worked into. Then we have the next space over. Pull through two loops. Now here on the end, <clears throat> excuse me, here on the end, you will see two loops. I'm squeezing them together right here. And you're going to go into those two loops like a single crochet stitch and pull up. Now we will work our return pass, which is going to start off with a chain one. So that is just yarn over and pull through one loop. Then you will yarn over and pull through two, just like we did for the simple Tunisian stitch. There we go. Yarn over and pull through two all the way to the end. And that is how your work should be looking thus far. Then we will repeat this one more time because it says to do two rows of the wave stitch and three rows of simple Tunisian stitch. So here we go, starting in this space right here. Here is our edge bar and our next bar over and we're going to work right into the hollowed out space between and every hollowed out space between all of the sets of bars. So we go into that space <clears throat> and we pull up a loop, next space over, pull up a loop, and pull through the first two on the hook. Same space, pull up a loop, next space over, we repeat, just like we did in the first row. It's really a fun stitch and it goes by pretty quick. Honestly, I think it works up faster than the simple Tunisian stitch. Okay, and then into the last space. So we go into the last space we just worked into, pull up a loop and then the very last space on the row, go in, pull up a loop and pull through two. Then just like we did before, only this time we're going to change colors. So this is technically our second row of the wave stitch. So now we have our new color and we're going to work our return pass with the new color. And it's going to create this really nice weaved in looking effect. I really like it. So like we did in the last row, we find the two, the two loops on the end that look like a little single crochet right here. There we go. If I can get my needle in there. There we go. And we're going to work right into that. It's right on the side. So you can see how to find it just like that. and you will pull up a loop. Now we will change color with our chain one. So hold on to your old color, grab your new color, yarn over essentially, just hook the yarn and pull through just one strand, one loop. Then you can drop the tail. Now you will chain one or yarn over and pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, all the way to the end. And we get this really interesting interchange of colors that begins to happen. Isn't that neat? Okay, now we're going to work three rows of simple Tunisian stitch. So with simple Tunisian stitch, we always skip the very first bar, the edge bar. We never work into that. We're going to start working into this bar right here and we are going to work right into the side of the bar just like that. So 
working your first bar, which is always technically the second bar on the row, you go in and you pull up a loop. Next bar over, pull up a loop. Next bar over, pull up a loop. And you just keep doing this all the way to the end. And we will work three total rows of these. On your third row, when you're ready to work your return pass, that's whenever you will pull the burgundy or maroon color back through. Now right here, where I am pinching the two together, that's where we go in to work our last stitch, just like that. Yarn over, pull through one, then yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, all the way to the end, just like that. Look at that interesting little weave of color that, that shines through there. It's really, really neat. I like it a lot. So for your second row of Simple Tunisian, you will start the same way we did into the second bar right here, just to the front presenting bar, and pull up a loop. Well, let's try that again. Pull through that one. There we go. Slipped my stitch. Okay, we pull up a loop. And then we pull up a loop all the way to the end. Very, very easy. Of course, it's a lot more time consuming whenever you have to do this 236 times. But it goes by very, very fast. I think it only took me a total of two days to make the scarf. There we go, right on the end there. Yarn over, pull through just one. Then we pull through two. Pull through two all the way to the end. And I will show you how we change colors one more time. Okay, work another row of simple Tunisian. I will be back whenever I have three rows of Simple Tunisian done and I will show you how we change color one more time. Okay, got my three rows of Simple Tunisian stitch done. Now I'm ready to change color. I just worked my last stitch right there. Add my new color and pull through just one loop. Tighten this up, there we go. And now we yarn over and pull through two. <clears throat> there we go, yarn over, pull through two. Pardon my dog, he's barking at a bird or something. <laughs> okay, all the way to the end, and there we go. And then just like we did before, we will go in between these two bars right here and start our first wave stitch into the next space in between the bars. We work our next stitch, then we yarn over. Try that again, then we yarn over and pull through two into the same stitch. We pull up a loop, next space over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, all the way to the end and we will do this twice. Okay, now on to the actual scarf. I feel pretty well caught up. In fact, I'm ahead on the sample. So when we get to the scarf, I'll still be behind a little bit, but that'll be okay. Okay, okay so I just wanted to show you how we work this on the actual hook. And you can get all of your stitches on here. As you can see, I'm almost done with this. and. You can absolutely get all of your stitches on. This is again, 13 and a half inch long hook. I made it all the way to the end. I haven't yet worked my very last stitch. I wanted to do that with you right here. I'm kind of pinching the two ends together. You'll work right into that. Chain one, which is just pull through one loop. 
then yarn over and pull through two all the way back. And we're gonna need to do this whole thing one more time where we work a forward pass picking up loops on our hook and then work a return pass for a total of three rows of the simple Tunisian stitch. Then we will begin to work the wave stitch again. Two rows of that. Okay, so we will carry on with our uh, pulling through two over and over till we get to the end. I will be back whenever we are ready to change colors and begin working the wave stitch. So I'm going to off camera complete one more full row of the simple Tunisian stitch. I'll be right back. Okay, just coming up to the end of my third row. And you know, you can count Tunisian rows by counting the like little sideways braids behind the bars. There's one, two, and three. So that makes three rows of the simple Tunisian. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull through, do my return pass with the new color because I really, really like the way this turned out down here. I love this little random pop of color within another color. I, it's almost becoming one of my favorite parts of this pattern. I keep looking down and seeing that and going, oh, I do like that. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I haven't worked my very last stitch yet. I like to work those on camera with you just because I know those are the hardest to figure out when you're kind of new to Tunisian. And I'm not that experienced in Tunisian as I've explained before, but I do understand this part. And right here on the end, it looks like the top of a little single crochet right here where I'm squeezing them together, the two little bars. And that's what we're going to work into just like that and pull up a loop. This is where I change color here. We change color here at the chain one where we just pull through one loop. This is where we change color, chain one. Drop my tail down and yarn over, pull through two and there we go so i'm gonna work this return pass then i will jump back on here and we will start working the wave stitch together again and from there you should have the pattern pretty well down pat and at that point i will meet you at the end of the last row we will work the end of the last row together and then we will work on the fringe together a little bit and of course, at that point, um, if you're watching this video ahead of time before you decide to make this, I'll be able, to, at that point, I'll be able to give you a more accurate um, yard count, yardage count as to how many yards this takes. Because they don't tell you in the pattern, you know, they almost never tell you in the pattern or they just say get, uh, you know, get three hanks of this particular brand and unless you're super familiar with the brand and also 115 150 years old where the brand existed you don't know what that means <laughs> so okay i am going to finish working all of my no no not all of my rows i'm going to finish my return pass we're going to start the wave stitch together one more time then i'm going to finish working all of my rows and i will remind you what how many rows that is supposed to be. Okay. See, I love that. I love that little, that little pop of color that is behind those brown bars. Oh, I love it. Okay, guys, I'll see you at the end of this return pass. Okay, just made it to the end here. I do like the way that looks. Okay. Now, like we did before, we start right here between our edge bar and the second bar over. So we will go into that space and pull up a loop. That's a little long on this side here. Okay, try that one more time. We will go into this space. That's better. 
then the next space over and yarn over and pull through two loops then into the exact same space we just worked into we go in and we pull up a loop the next space over pull up a loop yarn over and pull through two into the same space pull up a loop next space over pull up a loop pull through two there we go and we'll just keep repeating all the way to the end and we will do this twice till our work looks like this down here I really like this stitch. It's a lot of fun. And it's getting me to do more Tunisian crochet, which I am enjoying. Oh, should have done a little less talking there and a little more paying attention, huh? <laughs> there we go. There. Okay, guys, so from here on, we pretty much know what we have to do now. We've got to do two rows of the wave stitch, giving us this sort of, you know, ladder look, where it's the two lumps on one side and kind of hollowed out in the middle. Then we do the three rows of the simple Tunisian stitch, on and on and on. Now let's look at the pattern and see how many times we need to repeat this. Okay, so it says, now I'm not using, you already know I'm not using the colors that they recommend. Uh, I don't even know what that color is, if anybody knows. <laughs> what is that? Okay, so I'm going to replace it with my own colors. Um, my dominant color, my main color is going to be the burgundy color. So continue to do so until the scarf has seven of the burgundy color and six of the brown color. They say blue. Honestly, whatever color they were gonna match with that is probably gorgeous. Uh, but I'm gonna, we're gonna continue to work until we have seven of the dark color and six of the contrasting lighter color, okay? So when you have seven rows of this, which means you should end your last, your last color stripe should be the same as you start off with your darker color. Then it says to bind off. It doesn't tell you how to bind off, so I'll show you how I bind off. And finish the ends with a deep fringe and the sides with a, scale, a scalloped edge. I almost said scaling edge. <laughs> a scalloped edge. So they don't say exactly how they want you to do the scalloped edge. So we'll just do a simple little scalloped edge. I mean, we can see that it's kind of a lacy little edge and it almost seems like it's the same color as the lighter color, but we might do something a little extra fancy. Yeah, we might do something a little extra fancy. I'm thinking gold. I'm thinking a gold yarn for the edge, like a pop of something different. I don't know. We'll play around with it when we get to that point. And I don't know what color I want to do the fringe either because it looks like they have the fringe in the lighter color, and all of that would look great. And actually, we might do we might just do all of that. Actually, yeah, we might do the the scalloped edge in this fawny color, and oh, you can kind of see it now. The actual color of this yarn it's not that orangey like mustardy color. It really is pretty. See now you can see what it kind of actually looks like when it's sitting on the white. My guess is the white balance is helping you see the actual color. So let's see if you can see it on, on here. See, that's kind of helping. This already looks like kind of a gold, really. So actually, yeah, we might do the light color for the scalloped edge and also for the deep fringe. Now they say deep fringe. I'm thinking, what, six, seven inches, half a foot? 
Why not? That would be gorgeous. Let's see what that looks like. There's six inches there, and there another inch would be seven inches. I mean, that's a pretty doggone good size. That really, truly is. If you look at it compared to my hand, six inches is my hand. So, yeah, that's a good size. Okay. I'm going to continue to work this pattern until I get to the very last row of my last of my the last color I'm supposed to work. Then we'll go on from there and we will figure up a scalloped edge. I guess it's something simple. This looks lacy. It looks real pretty. But it's a drawing, so you know, don't put too much stock into a drawing. And here you can see Isn't that pretty? Scarf for a gentleman. Probably be laughed at if I wore this 150 years ago, but you bet your butt I'm going to wear it these days. I may even be able to get my uh, oldest son to wear it. He likes stuff like this. Okay, guys, I'll see you guys in a little bit.
Okay, so at this point, I think it's probably safe to say that the yarn I assumed, the size I assumed that the pattern was calling for is not the right size because this is turning out to be too big and I'm only, we're supposed to have seven rows. I have four rows. We're supposed to have seven rows of the dark and six rows of the light. This is where I am going to call it for my pattern because I still have to put the scalloped edge on the outside. So, um, you know, it is what it is. We learned the pattern nonetheless, and the essence of the pattern is here. The spirit of the pattern is here, and I really like the way this looks, and I feel like it looks vintage. So we're going to carry on. Now I'm going to show you how to bind off. It just simply says to bind off. It doesn't give any instructions. So how I like to bind off is you go into your first loop, not the very, very first loop, but the first loop that we typically work right into the sidebar there. And you just pull a loop through and pull a loop through like a slip stitch. And that's it. And you just do this in every stitch. Now don't do it real tight because we have to work back into this edge. Remember, we got to do our scalloped sides. So I am just loosely binding off and creating that slip stitch. There we go. And of course, I am going to go ahead and work a single crochet row. It doesn't say to do this, but I'm going to work a single crochet row along the edges so that whenever we do put the fringe on there, it's got something more than just these loose Looser kind of stitches here to grip on to. You know, I really, really like the way this turned out. I truly do. What do you guys think? It's very interesting for a gentleman's scarf. It's, I guess I'm a gentleman because I fully intend on wearing this. Fully, fully. And making this with cotton was perfect because, you know, I live in Arizona. So scarves aren't really a thing around here. They can be, especially at night, but only for a brief time out of the year. So this will be nice to pair with, uh, I'm thinking I've got this really, really dark amethyst um, top and blue jeans and my dark boots. And I think that would make a really cute ensemble. I know on camera this is looking kind of orangey and dull and this is looking kind of mustardy, but if you could only see it in real life, this is the softest, sweetest brown and this is kind of a burgundy. And so they don't look quite this light and washed out and mustardy in real life. Okay, so let's continue to work these slip stitches all the way to the end just in every little sidebar here. And I'm hoping that when we work our scalloped edges, it will uncurl this edge, because this edge needs a little bit of uncurling, not too much, but some. Okay, guys, I will be back whenever I get to the other end of the last row we worked. Okay, made it to the end. I went ahead and switched to just my five millimeter regular crochet hook. It's a little lighter. It gives my hand a little bit of a break after working on this. So I have one stitch left. It's the last stitch where we typically work into the two loops and we are still going to catch those two loops and work a slip stitch. Now I'm going to chain one and I'm gonna work one single crochet all across the edge and I'm just gonna weave all my ends in as I go. So with my chain one right here on the side, I'm going to work one single crochet. And then I'm just going to put a single crochet in wherever one will go. Try to keep them nice and neat and evenly spaced as I can. work these ends in as well. There we go. 
I think that's looking pretty good. And I think I want two loops. If I can pick up that other loop right there. There we go. Just for better security. I think I'll put two in this long stitch. <clears throat> put one in here. And as you can see, I'm just gathering up my strings as I go, my tails. Oh, this little fella is almost empty. And I've decided I am going to go ahead and work one row of just slip stitch on this side. But I'm going to turn it around to the back side and work the slip stitch going, you know, along the back. That way it hopefully pulls this end out a little bit. So that's what I'm gonna do, and I'll show you guys that next. So, here we go. Let's just continue to work this end right here. Well, there we go. Okay, I'm going to finish working this all the way to the end, but you see how it's looking? Actually looks pretty darn good. There is the back. Looks pretty good. Okay, I will be back. I wish this didn't look so mustardy on camera. Oh well. I'll be back whenever I get to the end. I'm going to cut, then I'm going to start working some slip stitches on the back side of this scarf, the knitted, the knit looking side. Okay, I just finished working my row of single crochets across the end. That's how that turned out. I really like it. And here's all of my tails gathered up. There we go. We'll just clean this up in one big swoop. There's those. That one. And that one's so little it don't even need to be cut, not really. Okay, I'll weave in those ends later. Now let's work on this. I'm gonna need a fresh ball. Here we go. Thank goodness I have so many of these. Hopefully I can get the center to just pull. There we go. That's not too bad. Since I want some single crochets on this side too, here I have the back of my work. Here is the front and here is the back of my work. I'm actually going to start right here so that I can clean up the end of this. Then I will turn and start working my slip stitches down this way. So let's just go ahead and join. We will join right here in this stitch. There we go. And I'll work this tail in too. Might as well. Okay, and I will start with one single crochet into the same stitch I just joined into. Then I'll just start working my single crochets across. I will be back when I get down to the end of this first row here. Just worked my way all the way to the end. That's how that end turned out. Now, I'm going to chain one and turn and start working some slip stitches right into this edge here, wherever I feel like it looks like a stitch, I'm gonna work a slip stitch. I'll do that for just a few inches and we will see if it accomplishes what I'm hoping it will. Hoping, hoping. 
and it's not really uncurling it. Let me see if I can attack this beast another way. And I just started working a row of single crochet still from the back of the work and the single crochet. And I come up, up under the whole, like just the whole section right here. And I'm just working single crochets and they seem to be doing the trick. So I would recommend at this point doing a single crochet. Here we go, I just worked a bunch with you. And look at that there, it's it's unraveling it. And it's not really, it's, it's still the same size as the other side. And if I'm honest, a single crochet is gonna be a lot easier. It, let me rephrase that. It's gonna be a lot easier for us to work our scalloped uh, stitches in over here. So yes, I am going to just finish working the single crochet because it's uncurled it pretty darn good. like. No matter what I do, it's still uncurled. So there you go. Single crochet is the trick. Okay, let me finish working my single crochets. And then I will be back and we will figure out how to work a scalloped edge and keep the stitch count right. That's going to be the tricky part. <laughs> so what I came up with for the scalloped edge is a, a six double crochet shell every third stitch. And I counted it all the way to the end and the very last stitch will be the single crochet. So here's how we start that. I'll just go ahead and undo this. Okay, I go into the very first stitch. Chain one. Into that same stitch, we work our first single crochet. Then we skip two stitches, one, two, and in the third one over, work six double crochet. So that's one, two, try that again, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we skip two, one, two, and in the third one over, we work one single crochet. Then we skip two, one, two, and in the third one over, we work the shell stitch. two, three, four, five, and six. Then we skip two and work our single crochet to anchor it down. And we start all over again by skipping two and working a shell stitch in the third stitch over. And so that'll give us a nice scalloped edge where the numbers match. Okay, so I'm going to work both sides and then I'll come back and work the fringe with you. Okay, now we are ready to add the fringe. So some of you may be familiar with my Mayflower book. This is a book I really like to use to make my fringe with. So I just simply open up the cover and I stick a piece of the yarn into the cover and close it. Then I just start wrapping. Now the measurements of this book are six inches wide, about one inch, an inch thick, sorry, words, one inch thick. And it also is about nine and a half inches long. Well, nine and a quarter inches long. It's just one of my favorite books to make fringe with because whenever I do the fringe this way. It's just the perfect size for things like scarves and stuff like that. And if I work my fringe going this way, it's the perfect size for long shawls. So you just keep on wrapping around like this. 
over and over and over again until you have the amount that you want. I'll likely need to cut more, but this will be enough for now. And get some sharp scissors and cut. The tighter that you wrap it, the easier it is to cut. Okay, and now we have just the one that's still in the book. That's all you have to do. And then you'll just size this up with one of these right here and cut off the little excess. But now I have this like spaghetti mess of fringe. Separate that. There we go. In the picture, it looks like they have several strands going into one section. So that's what I fully intend to do as well. I don't know how far apart to place the fringe, so I'm just going to go with whatever looks good. I don't even know how many pieces of fringe I want to use. So I think I'm going to go with, well, here's four pieces. What do we think of four pieces makes it look like there's eight? I think four pieces is pretty good. So I think four pieces is what I'm gonna go with. Let's look at five real quick, just, just to get an idea. Because we may like five better. I mean, this is a gentleman's scarf. We want it to look nice and fancy. Five looks pretty good too. I don't know. I really don't know. I don't wanna overcrowd the stitches. I think I might go with five. Yeah, I like five. So, looks like they don't include the ends over here, the um, scalloped edges. So, I'll just start right here. Make sure everything is even. Now with this real slippery yarn, I've worked with this before on a poncho top. I usually have to fold it over twice with the hook because it does like to unravel itself. It's very, very silky feeling. So I'll go through once. Let's see what that does. I think that's gonna be okay. Doesn't seem to be wanting to undo itself. Maybe because there's five pieces there, it's kind of allowing it to hold on to itself. Okay, so let's see here. I might, oh, I might just skip one. I think I'm just gonna put this in every other one. I really want this to be packed with fringe on the bottom. If I don't like it, then I'll just undo it and do every other. But let's start with every single one to start. I did not mean to say every single one. I meant to say every other one to start. <laughs> okay, here we go. I think I like it in every other one. I really, truly do. And I feel like that really looks a lot like the photo as well. So I am going to spend some time doing this. Then we will take our final reveal shots. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really enjoyed making this scarf with you. I really hope you guys give it a try. And don't forget to check the description box down below for links to find all of the material that I used today. And keep it classy. Keep it vintage. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.